Hey everybody, it's Hi, everybody, and happy Thursday. Welcome back um, to virtual reading with the First Lady. So I have a great book um, that I'm going to read today. And we've read one of, from this author already, Allison Rourke. Uh, it's called Alley Cat and the Friendship Friday. She has a great series. So, um, so if you haven't heard of um, Alley Cat series, uh, make sure you go and log on to her. Um, she has a Facebook page. And she also has a website, so we'll talk about that at the end. But Alley Cat and the Friendship Friday. And it's written by Allison um, Bork and illustrated by Kiara Cavanti. I hope I'm saying that right. And so um, I'm going to say she has another book we're going to read later on. But Okay, so here we go. Alley Cat bounced out of bed and raced down the stairs. You could tell it was Friday, the best day of the week. Alley Cat was excited for her field trip to the health clinic today. What would you like for breakfast, Alley Cat? asked Mom. Chocolate pancakes with extra syrup and sprinkles. How about eggs and banana instead, asked Mom. Alley Cat thought for a moment, perfect. The health clinic will ask if we had a healthy breakfast this morning. Well, that was a good thing to have. Let's see, I got a little glare there. There we go. There she is. There we go. See it now? Yep. Yeah. What do you think you'll do at the health clinic today? Asked Dad. We'll learn all about how doctors care for their patients, said Alley Cat. The patient, Bugsy said proudly. Not that kind of patient, Alley Cat said. Patients are good, are people who go to the doctor when they're sick. Oh, said Bugsy. So here, great illustrations too, I love it. There's her healthy breakfast with an egg and banana, There's an apple there. All right, Allison does a great job with her books. I hope I can sit with Spotty or Luna on the way to the health clinic. You'll have fun no matter who you sit with, said Mom. You better hurry or you'll miss the bus. Alley Cat and Bugsy grabbed their backpacks and said goodbye to Mom and Dad. So she's thinking, see the little bubble? She's thinking about who she's going to sit by on the bus. And then they're heading out. So um, Facebook is a little different now, if you don't know, so you'll have to bear with me when I'll say hello to everybody in just a minute. At school, the kitten sat on the carpet for calendar time, eagerly awaiting the field trip. When it was almost time to leave, Alley Cat's teacher, Miss Purry, walked to the front of the class. She had a special announcement. Attention class, said Miss Purry, as you know, we're going on a field trip today. The class cheered. But I have more exciting news, Miss Perry continued. We have a new student. The class was silent. Hmm. I wonder if any of you have ever been a new student or have had a new student in your class. It can be a very scary thing. I was a new student one time. Everyone meet. Our new student. Miss Purry said as she led the new student in. Let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, friend, the class said. Luna raised her hand quickly. Here, she can sit by me on the bus. Sure, Miss Purry replied. Alley Cat couldn't believe it. Luna, she whispered, I was hoping to sit with you on the bus. I'm sorry, Alley Cat. Maybe we can sit with each other the next time. That's okay, Alley Cat thought. Maybe I can sit with Spotty instead. There's Spotty.
Okay, let's see what happens. As the kittens loaded into the bus, Alley Cat noticed Spotty was sitting with Rue. Oh no, Alley Cat thought. Everyone already had a bunny. I'll have to sit along. Alley Cat climbed into the bus sadly, watching as Luna and Phoebe discussed Phoebe's multicolored paws and face. They even exchanged friendship bracelets. As the kittens headed to the health clinic, Alley Cat felt left out and didn't know what to do. Why didn't I offer to sit with Phoebe on the bus? Now I don't have a bracelet. The bus arrived at the health clinic and the class went inside to meet Mr. Katz, the physician taking them on the tour. Can anyone tell us what happens here at the clinic? Asked Dr. Katz. You help those who feel bad to feel better, suggested Luna. Yes, great answer, said Dr. Katz. Since you all are at school today, you must be feeling well. Not so much, thought Alley Cat to herself. I like the way the um, author wrote whatever she's thinking in red. So it's something that she's thinking inside her hat, head. Now, we may all look different on the outside, but we are the same on the inside. Let's talk about our hearts. They are three layers of heart, outer, middle, and inner, said Dr. Katz. Just then, Alley Cat realized how to solve her friendship problem. I'll make a bracelet with three parts. That way, Luna, Phoebe, and I can all be friends, Alley Cat thought. So she's already thinking about what she can do. Hmm. And there is Dr. Katz describing the heart. The class headed to an exam room to see all the supplies doctors use. What is this? Spotty asked. Do you make popsicles here? No, they're no, those are tongue depressors said Dr. Katz. We use those to hold down the patient's tongue to check for sore throats. Oh, said Spotty. Alley Cat, you can use some of these to make your popcorn popsicles. Alley Cat and the class giggled. She was feeling better already. If you remember, we read a story about Alley Cat making popsicle, popcorn popsicles not too long ago. Since you all have been good patients today, you get stickers to take home, said Dr. Katz. Alley Cat, can you hand out the stickers to the class, asked Miss Purry. Alley Cat nodded and took the stickers from the doctor. She gave one sticker to each kitten, keeping the paper clips. And the kittens thanked the doctor for their tour and headed back to the bus. This is perfect, she thought. Alley Cat pulled out the paper clips she collected and wrapped them with different stickers. Then she connected them together to form a bracelet. I know just what to do to solve my friendship problems. So those are the stickers and the paper clips. Hmm, what do you think that Alley Cat's going to do? I have an idea. Back in class, Alley Cat joined Luna and Phoebe on their way to recess. Do you want to see something cool? asked Alley Cat. Sure, said Luna and Phoebe. Alley Cat pulled out three paperclip bracelets with words on them. Wow, are those for us? Luna asked. Yes, I made one for each of us. Alley Cat handed Luna and Phoebe a paperclip and the words best and friends on it. I'll keep this paperclip with the word R and we can all have a friendship bracelet. Great idea, said Phoebe, and we can add more words with more friends, said Luna. How as neat as that? So she's even thinking about more friends. That is awesome. 
the girls put their paper clips together and it read aloud, friends are best. This is perfect, said Luna. Yes, said Phoebe, thank you for making my first day so wonderful. She pointed out the words on the clips. We are best friends. Yes, we are, said Alley Cat. What a great story. So here's our author. Isn't she beautiful? Allison is the author of Rhyme or Reason Travel Series and the multi-award winning Alley Cat Series. Um, so we're honored to highlight her books again. Isn't she great? And let's see. Here's the friendship bracelet um, and have the supplies you'll need. So it tells you step by step on how to make them. And I think she has it on her website. If you go to her website, It'll show exactly how um, you can make a friendship bracelet. What a great thing to do while you're at home. And then you can check out the alleycatseries.com and mascotbooks.com. I'm going to put that up there so you can see better. There we go. So make sure you write that down. And you can go visit and like her page and tell her how much we appreciate her sharing her Alley Cat series with our another great Louisiana author. So I'm going to say hello to everybody. David, how are you, David? Good morning, Jennifer and the crew. So glad to have y'all on. And our next book, and I have a special guest coming, so stay tuned. Our next book is called Guardian Angel of Mine by Callie M. Thomas and illustrated by Aaron Castell. Okay. Let's see, another one by um, Alligator Book Bites. Okay, Guardian Angel of Mine. There is a school on Heaven's Lane where our guardian angels travel by train. The angelic friends learn patience and love and send letters of hope through a lovely white dove. Oh, I love the rhyming words. Great illustrations here. Yeah. Every day our angels carry out their mission to conquer evil and show us a pure vision. When duty calls, they do not delay. Our guardian angels will protect our day. Ooh, my goodness. Chopping up some words there. They live in heaven and deliver good news and will comfort you when you have the blues. Aw. Sweet. They are by your side wherever you fall. When you need a friend, just remember to call. The students at school were playing ball, but Cole was afraid for fear he would fall. Today will mark his first big play, and he is afraid of what the others might say. His friends encourage him to play his best, but he knows they will never let a mistake rest. Hmm. Cole remembered what his mother had said at night when they prayed before he went to bed. If you need a friend to be by your side, just call your angel and he will be there to guide. A great little story. Paul Cole paused at that moment and closed his eyes. Guardian angel of mine in the skies, today I need you at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Hmm. He's getting ready, isn't he? The bell rang twice on Heaven's Lane, and the angels feared that Cole was in pain. The message arrived by a flash of lightning, so firm, so fierce, so fast, it was frightening. Hmm. The angel swiftly opened the letter and quickly knew how to make things better. All will be well at the end of the day, for Cole's own angel was a, has a game to play. Oh, so here's Cole. Let's see what happens. Cole felt the wind brush across his face, and he knew his angel 
was at this place. He walked up to the plate with his head held high, knowing that his faithful friend was close by. How sweet. Love that. Cole gripped the bat to swing with force and believed his angel was the source. Strength and patience kept him free while faith and courage remained the key. Cole was guided by the light when he hit the ball out of sight. He swiftly finished the exciting game and quickly rose in victory to fame. Oh, wow, now he's a hit. Look at that ball. Cole was excited to tell his mother about his day with his friends and brother. My guardian angel was at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Tonight, I will pray with all my might and thank my friend who is just and right. The angel had returned to heaven's lane and they had cupcakes waiting on the train. He was welcomed home with laughter and joy and they all reflected on his message to the boy. The angel's message is clear for all to share. Believe in yourself and we will always be there. Never give up on your dreams and endeavors. You can move mountains if you believe in forever. Every day our angels carry out their missions to conquer evil and show us a pure vision. When duty calls, they do not delay. Our guardian angels will protect our day. And it has a little prayer. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. That's sweet. And the author, here's a picture, is from Southwest Louisiana. We have a lot of authors, I keep saying that, from that area of the state. Um, and we have Aaron Cassell is also a native of Southwest Louisiana. So here are beautiful pictures of the two of them. So I want to thank them for sharing such a beautiful book, such a great book. And now for my special guest. So I brought, many of you have, um, Samantha's been with me before, my daughter Samantha. Hello. So good to have you back, Samantha. Well, thank you. So thank I am going to say a little shout out to a few people. Um, thank you so much for your sweet. Hi, Alley Cat. Great messages. Thank you all so very much. All right, the book that I have today, I think uh, all of us can learn from at a time like this, and it's called What Do You Do With a Problem? And it is by written by Kobe Wamata, uh, illustrated by May Beesom. Very good illustrations in this. And the description says, What do you do with a problem, especially one that follows you around and doesn't seem to be going away? Do you worry about it, ignore it? Do you run and hide from it? This is the story of a persistent problem and the child who isn't so sure what to make of it. The longer the problem is avoided, the bigger it seems to get. But when the, fan when the child finally musters up the courage to face it, the problem turns out to be something quite different than expected. This story is for anyone at any age who has ever had a problem that they wish would go away. It is a story to inspire you to look closely at the problem and to find out why it's there. Because you might discover something amazing about your problem and yourself. So, it says, right. for, for shale, shale and ever, may you have enough challenges to keep life interesting and plenty of love to make it all worthwhile, Dad. Oh, sweet. Yes. What do you do with a problem? Let's see if I can get it from that. I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. <laughs> Getting used to new Facebook today. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with a problem, I thought? I wanted to make it go away. I shoot it. I scowled at it. I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. I started to worry about my problem. 
What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? Notice how all the pictures in the beginning of the book are very dark and, and black and white and gray. What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and worried about that. Very interesting illustrations. Very beautiful. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything I could to hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself, but it still found me. And the more I avoided my problem, the more I saw it everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all. That's what worry makes you feel. It makes you feel yucky and makes you feel very good. <clears throat> I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up or attacked me. Notice there's a little more color now. I realized that I had to face it. So even though I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid, I got ready and I tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered that it had something beautiful inside. My, my problem held an opportunity. It was an opportunity for me to learn and to grow, to be brave and to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely because some opportunities only come once. Look how beautiful and bright the pictures have become. He seems to be feeling better. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore because I know their secret. <laughs> Every problem has an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it. And that's the end. So even though that's a children's book, Samantha, it really, mm. I saw a lot of um, opportunities for us as adults to, to really learn from that book. And so, you know, just um, in, in regards to even the, the virus and mm -hmm. what we're all going through is trying to find opportunities to grow and to learn and to use this um you know to use make this time to you know better yourself you know learn new hobbies re reconnect with people that you haven't talked to in a while there's always something positive that can come out of difficult times like this that's right well thank you for thank being you. here it's been great um we're gonna have some fun things coming up next week on my facebook page we've got some updates on the garden um that the governor started growing um good friday and we also have a um a shout we're going to do a little a special on the rose garden because um this is the month um, of June is uh, Rose Garden Month, and so we're excited about that. Um, we have a bunch of fun things coming up, so make sure you stay tuned. I know you're all going to be out and about in this beautiful um, 
uh, hot weather we're having, but enjoy it. And so I hope you enjoy the weekend. Please stay tuned to the governor's page for the upcoming weather issues throughout the weekend. Um, pay attention. Um, get a plan. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, information out there, so make sure that you are um, paying attention. So God bless each and every one of you, and thank you again for tuning in and share this with other friends so we can um, share the love of our Louisiana authors and illustrators. Thanks again. Take care.